Dr. Rick dropping in. Hope everybody is having a great week. Uh, it's a beautiful day uh, to be alive. It's a beautiful week to be pressing towards something of value and power. Welcome to another episode and segment of The Black Voice. I am Dr. Rick Wallace. Look, look, let's just jump into this because I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, you know the routine. Look. Um, there's a big thing going on around uh, the internet right now. Uh, I don't know if you know, but a few years ago, rapper uh, Bun B from uh, UGK um, came home from an event with his wife, went in, he went upstairs to go use the restroom, take a dump. And she was downstairs and the doorbell rung. When the doorbell rung, she opened the door thinking maybe it's uh, Amazon delivering a package or whatever. Turns out it's um, a home invasion. They run in on her. He's upstairs in the restroom with the door closed. Uh, but she had the presence of the mind to talk loud enough that he could hear her. And the thing she was saying was not only giving him clues that someone was in the house, but where exactly they were downstairs. Uh, eventually the guy looked around and realized whose house he was in. So I'm assuming that they didn't target Bun specifically, but just target a specific house because of maybe cars and whatever else. But anyway, she talked him after he looked around and saw whose house it was. Uh, she talked him into taking her Audi and she gave him the keys. He jumped in the car. By this time, Bun comes down, no pants on, but it's, but it's a banger in his hand and he dumps a number of rounds into the Audi. And when the story was first told, I actually thought the guy died, but it turns out that the guy didn't die. He has been facing charges. And so eventually we get to the point where uh, he is being convicted and Bond is asked to testify and give a, uh, an account of what happened that day. Now he gets on stand and there's a picture or maybe a video, I haven't seen it, but of him being on the stand and he is getting blasted for snitching, for being a snitch. And it, it never seems to amaze me anymore at what the internet and social media has done to even codes in the hood that I think uh, need to be rethought, but I'm going to clarify some things because everybody's weighing in on whether or not he's a snitch or not. Let me explain something to you. There are a couple of things we have to look at. First and foremost is let's clarify this whole snitching thing because it blows my mind how ignorant and unaware. And what it tells me, a lot of people who are commenting on this never, never live that life to be demanding somebody honor a code that they don't have a clue about or that has been twisted over years. The no snitching code it was never meant to paralyze communities and hold them hostage while criminals do whatever they want to and they can't say anything. That was never it. The no snitching code was a part of a permeation in, within the crim, crim, any particular criminal element, whether it was the mob, whether it was gangs, whether it was what uh, two, two uh, fellow thieves and robbers. The code is among criminals. It's saying if we go out and do something or you are aware of something that's going on within the criminal code and you get popped, you can't go tell on anybody else within the criminal element in order to lessen your um, your sentence or your culpability and whatever ha transpired. This is an honor among thieves type thing. And we know there's not no honor among thieves, but this is an honor among thieves things. In other words, it was meant to say, man, we go out and do this. Or you come into this organization, this code is this and this code, if violated, is punishable by whatever that is, not getting into that. But that's what the whole thing, it was never meant for people who were not a part of any particular cr criminal activity. Now, everybody's going back and talking about the fact that back in the day uh, with UGK and some stuff that Bond wrapped 25 years ago. 
uh, about what he wouldn't do and uh, about talking to the law and a bunch of other things that now he's out there violating that. Well, first of all, that would suggest that we as men have no capacity whatsoever to evolve, to mature, to grow. There are some things I thought and did in my 20s that I thank God I don't think that way anymore. There are some things I thought and did in my 20s. This is Thank God I'm alive today. And I'm not supposed to carry that thinking. I'm supposed to evolve. I'm supposed to grow. I'm supposed to come in into a better way of thinking. I'm supposed to realize that I'm better and more effective and more impactful in the lives of the people I love, not in prison and not in a cemetery. So in essence, what people are actually suggesting from behind their keyboards or from behind the keyboards on their phones is that you don't do anything. You need to go handle that. Now he came out and handled business like he was supposed to. When he did, he dumped into the car. Luckily, the dude didn't die. So we didn't deal with that fallout. But now it's time to sit up and it's time to say, okay, hold up. So what you want a man to do is say, this man came in, accosted my wife, accosted my wife, violated the most sacred space a man can have, his home. And now you want me to say, okay, I don't talk to the law. So we're going to let him go. So the only alternative, which I think is the subliminal suggestion in this, and some people have outright said it, is you don't say anything, you go get him yourself. So now you want a man in his 50s to honor something he said in his 20s or maybe his early 30s at the most to sit up and say, screw all this stuff I got going on with business, screw having a life with my wife. I'm going to go dump on this dude and then I'm going to go do time. When I can sit up and I defended my home, so I sent a message. You come here, I will blast. Now it's time for that person to have that consequence. You don't, he doesn't owe him anything. He didn't agree to anything with him. If I sit up and say, man, we about to go do this. At the moment I say, okay, let's go do it. Then I am now in a... Uh, <laughs> agreement with you to go do something if we get caught up in that i have an obligation based off of the no stitching code if i get caught to keep my mouth shut that's what that's about that's what a rat is that's what a snitch is a snitch is somebody you just shot somebody in their front yard that might be kin to them and i can't say anything because there's a no snitching room we have totally twisted that in order to allow criminal activity to escalate in our communities where we are holding the people who should feel safe in our communities regardless to what's going on. Do you realize that that's what gangs were in the beginning? They were the things that made sure that police didn't come in there uh, victimizing our community, that outsiders didn't come in victimizing our, our community. It was about defending and protecting and then it turned on itself. The very people in the community are the ones that's most afraid of those people now. And that's not what it was ever meant to be. We allowed it to be twisted. We lost sight of what was important. We lost a great deal of our power. And so when I sit up and I look at this and it never fails me to uh, that so many people will show up from behind the keyboard and demand that a man demand that a man throw his life away to order some crazy code that never meant that in the first place. Uh, man, he should have did this. Man, he should have did that. I would have did this. I would have did that. You, you need to stand up and say, all these times, the very people who are demanding stuff aren't going to sacrifice Jack in any way or any form, shape, form, or fashion in any type of corresponding significance. They'll demand that you do it, but they're not going to do it. Or maybe they are foolish enough to be out there. Somebody comes in my house and survives. I am definitely giving my statement. Now, if I get caught up in something stupid, 
enough to get caught up in something where we're doing something and we and I get popped, then I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna roll and take what I gotta take. But that ain't happening. But if it did, then then I understand where we're coming from. There's a code for that. But if we're sitting up and we're trying to live legitimate lives, this man is a business owner now. This man is doing things in politics now, and. Uh, you expected him to honor some code from the street that he rapped about 30 years ago. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But the biggest part that bothers me is the suggestion that he honors something that he said 30 years ago suggests that there's no room for growth with us men. Um, that we don't have the ability and the capacity and the responsibility to elevate, to grow, to to become something better. That whatever we are in our early years is what we are going to be. And that's not reality. That's not who we are. That's not what we have the capacity to do. We have the capacity to become so much more, even than I am today. And and, and, and that is what we should be focusing on. That is what we should be applauding when we see it in men. We need to stop calling men who are being responsible, soft and weak. And when it's time to stand up, there's a time. You got to be able to handle your business. You got to show that people are safe in your periphery. Your, 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 your wife and your girl friend is safe. Your children are safe. Your mom's is safe. Your family is safe. Anybody that you have sit up and said, hey, you with me, they're good. You need to be able to do that. You need to be able to drop somebody if all, if, if, if absolutely necessary. And you need to be able to do it without second guessing. But you also got to understand that that isn't the only option. And when it's there's another, another option, you're going to do yourself better by uh, moving with the better, more viable option. That's decision making. That's what keeps you with your family and not in the system. That's what keeps you with your family and not six feet under. That's what keeps you with your family and not a whole cloud over your head where now you've made enemies with people who are gunning for you and won't stop until they get you because you thought that you had to honor the way of thinking from 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. A part of making a woman feel safe, we had this conversation last night, a part of making a woman feel safe isn't just what you can provide for her monetarily and materialistic. It's what you can provide for her in protection. And protection isn't just defending her against a physical assault directly. Protection is not putting her in harm's way with your choices. When you go to prison, I don't care how well you got her set up, how much money you got set aside, you put her in harm's way because the perfect protector isn't there anymore. The leader isn't there anymore. At some point, you've got to be able to show I'm leading you down a path that has sustainability. The game doesn't have sustainability. The game might get you to a certain point, but at some point, if you don't get out the game, the game will eat you alive. So that's that on that. I'm going to bounce out of here, but I had to talk about that. Um, on that note, I'm out. You know the rules. If you love the work we do at the Odyssey Project, the black voice in the community, show love, show support, support our work. I'm out. Take care. Yeah. They said I should give it up. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, 
uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.